talk about the goodness of Jesus. All it done for me, I just want to say. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Yeah, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, all it done for me, I just want to say. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Jesus, hold it up for me, just want to say, oh Lord, now yeah, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, hold it up for me, just have to say, again, well, when I was sick of you to the door, I thought I couldn't get away, and my body told me to run on, and I'm able to tell, again, I said I thank you Lord, Jesus, hold it up for me, just want to say, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, oh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, hold it up for me, just have to say, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, well, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, hold it up for me, just want to say, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, well, you and my mother and father, sister and brother, stop me when you're going out of my life, so many others, just want to say, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, Jesus, what it does for me, just have to say, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You see, when I was sick of you, I thought I couldn't get away. Well. Everybody told me to run on, now I'm even a tail. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Come on, man. I thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, oh yes, I did I thank you, Lord, come on, I did you be so good, and I thank you, I did you be so good, and I thank you, I did you be so good, and I thank you, I did you be so good, and I thank you, I thank you, Lord, come on, Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, so good. Be so good. You be so good. You be better than me, Lord. Then I'm in the mouth, sir. You be better than you, Lord. You be good to me. You be better than you, Lord. Say, I thank you, Lord. 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 I thank you, She comes, please. Yes. We're so happy that all of you are here tonight. 
Ain't no other better, no better place than to be in the house of God. No better place. He just keeps blessing and blessing and blessing. And I'm so glad I'm in the place to receive it. How many people are not there? He wants to pour it out and pour it out, but you're not there. I thank him for his love and for his mercy, for being so good and so kind, for being there. He's a present help, present help in time of need. And I glorify his name. We just thank God for all that's been done and what he's going to do. And we're, we're excited about every new day because every day brings something new, brings something better. And we're thankful for it tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Father, we thank you tonight because you've been so good and been so wonderful. We thank you you never failed us or let us down. God, we needed you more than we need anybody in the whole world. Thank you for being the love of my life, my joy, my peace, my everything. Couldn't make it one day without you. Thank you, God, for coming into this place. Thank you for showing yourself. Thank you, God, because you never left us lacking in anything, but you've always filled us, and our cup runneth over tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that you'd minister to your people, that you would do what needs to be done. We'll give you glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Yes. Glory be to God. Uh, the 19th verse says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know, I want to preach a little bit tonight just on that. You know, you should never run around trying to figure out how God is going to meet your needs. He said, I will supply all your need, no matter what it is. But I think sometimes we find ourselves going to the wrong places looking for it. But when he said, I'll supply, you may not know where it's coming from, but he'll do it. Because he's God. He doesn't lack in anything. Everything that, he, that, that, that we need, he's got it already. He already knew what we were going to need before we even asked him. I'm thankful tonight that over the years, I can say like David, I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Everything I ever needed, he's always supplied it. When I didn't know where it was coming from, it looked like it was too dark to see your way. God always came through as he's doing right now. He hasn't left us or forsaken us. He is here right now doing what you need him to do. Come, you know what, every day of your life you ought to wake up and say, God, thank you for supplying my needs for today. Before the day is even started, thank you for supplying my needs today. Thank you for being here at the point of every need. I know I can trust you. You can trust him. He'll never fail. He'll never let you down. People will, but he won't. Think about it. So he said, if you look to me, I'll give you that. You know what I like about God? He's not tight-fisted. When he says, I supply your need, I mean, he always gives you more than you need. I mean, if you do what you need to do, God's surely going to do what he needs to do. There's no doubt about it. So ask yourself, are you looking for the supply in all the wrong places? And you say, well, I don't know why God haven't done it. Because you went to the wrong place, seeking it out. And God is just telling you, you can trust me, look to me. David said, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. Why, my help cometh from the Lord. Not from people, not from this thing or that thing, but it comes from him. He's always going to send it through. You don't have to walk around and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, I'll take care of it. I think the biggest problem man has today is that he don't believe it. He doesn't believe it. That's why he gets into a panic when things look like it ain't going to work out and, and I'm up against it. They get into a panic because they don't believe God. If you believe it, you wouldn't be panicking. I look at people sometimes and I think they're having a prayer meeting, asking God for this and work that out. You know what? We come off better. We just get on our knees and say thank you for what you already did. 
Thank you for what you've already done. And anything else that I need, you're going to take care of it. It's just a matter of me standing on your word and believing it with all my heart. That if you did it yesterday, you'll do it today. We got to believe that. You know, sometimes man's always tight-fisted no matter how you look at it. I'm holding today because just in case. A just in case balled up in their hand that they should have sold it a long time ago, but I didn't do it. Why? Because you really didn't believe God was going to give it to you. If you did, you said, take this. I don't know what tomorrow I'm going to hold. Take this. You're not worried about it. You're not concerned. I've lived my life ever since I can remember trusting God that he would do it. He would take care of it. Be it my body, be it any other situation, no matter what may happen, I believe God is going to do exactly what he says. All you got to do is be prepared to wait. But he's never late. We think so. I don't know where the Lord is. I have to have that like yesterday. If you had to have it yesterday, he would have been there yesterday. And if he's not there yesterday, me, you still got some time. Wait on, don't let me forget, Eric, to pray for you tonight before I get out of here. Did you bring that list? All right. So think about it. I've got to learn how to trust and lean on God and know that that arm, that everlasting arm, never gets tired. It's always there doing what we need it to do. I mean, holding us up when we can't hold ourselves up. I say to the Lord sometimes, just pick me up and throw me across your shoulder and take me for a ride. Because sometimes I feel like I can't just get up. So you just pick me up, throw me across your shoulder. That's a big shoulder. He can handle it. He don't have to look at me and say, well, Rosa, I can't carry you. No, come on, I'll take you. And I'm telling you, he's been doing it for the years and years. I am so thankful that I didn't wait like a lot of people. They just kept seeking out things over here and over there. But when you really trust God, he's going to do exactly what he says. You know what? I was thinking about Samson was thirsty after he had had a battle fighting the enemy. And he looked to the Lord and said, after winning all this, will I die of thirst? No. So you ain't going to die of thirst. But you know what? We're looking for the water fountain. Well, there ain't no water fountains around here. Where can you get a drink? But when it comes to God, it don't have to be a fountain. Because he can do it any way he wants to. That's what I like about him. He's not limited to a situation or any of those things. All you got to do is trust him. Just trust him. And God had water to come out of a jawbone of an ass. Isn't that an unbelievable place? The jawbone that he killed all these people with. Now it's going to be your water supply. That's amazing. They say, I'm thirsty. And God said, here. And out of the jawbone of an ass came water. And there he turned it up and began to drink and drink and drink. God knows how to come through for you. He knows how to do it if you dare trust him or believe him. Israel was thirsty one time. He said, Moses, you know, there were some of the most hard-headed, frustrating people. Moses was doing a hundred to lead them people. They was always complaining. Well, you all bring us in this wilderness, we're going to die, we ain't got nothing to eat. God give them some beautiful manna from heaven. I don't know what we're going to do with this manna. We're going to tire of this manna. We need to, a man is sick. He's always complaining. He's never, never satisfied. And you know what? The good thing I like about God, when he gives you when he gives you something for your thirst, I mean, it works and it quenches it. And you don't have to keep on looking for something else. That's exactly what we need. He gave it to us. <laughs> you would think Israel, after going coming from Egypt and going through the wilderness and all this, and watching God open up the Red Sea and do this thing and that thing, that they would automatically know that he's going to take care of them. But they just complain. And complain, no wonder Moses got mad with him. I don't, I don't say one negative thing about Moses. 
Because I get tired of the ones I got, and they few compared to him. You think, come on, what is it now? There's always something not right. I don't know what I've been praying and praying. And you know, I don't know why God ain't gave it to me yet. You know, I just sit the road and he go ask. No, not you. When you say, is he? Not you. Because you got to believe he's going to answer. I don't believe I've ever prayed a prayer that God didn't answer. Did he answer every time the way I would like for it to be answered? No, but he answered. He always answers. So now they're thirsty and they need some water and they're complaining about Moses. You know, you should never complain about a leader. Do you know what they go through? You can't even begin to imagine. In the course of a week, if one member of this church had to, had to be in my life for one week, before Wednesday got here, you'd already be dead. you say, oh, my God. How do you do this, my God? I can't get I got to get out of here. It's because we don't trust God for strength, for life, for health, everything. Because I know he can do it. And so Israel, and I said, we want some water. And God gave them some water out of a rock. Since when did rocks store up water? You know that doesn't happen. So now I'm going to give you some water. Don't go around looking for some place where you think I'm coming. I will guarantee you as sure as you think God is coming a certain way, he's not coming that way. Because we always look for God. Well, that's why he came last time. That don't mean he's coming that way this time. But he's coming. I love the fact that because God is supernatural and because he is so powerful, he does things in a way that just literally blows your mind. But this is amazing. Can you believe that? This is amazing. A lot of people have never got to the point of amazing. They never got there because they're so busy, busy running around and getting mad with folks and this one and that one, and, and, and they could have helped me. Maybe that wasn't where God wanted you to get it. But we believe somebody in the flesh is going to do it. Flesh is not dependable. What it is today, it may be something else tomorrow. So think about it for a minute and say, you know what? I need to learn to lean on God. <clears throat> I remember when Sarah first got saved. And wow. Every time anything came up, she said, all I got to do is call mom and papa. What, what is it? Papa? Mom and papa? What was it? Huh? Mom and Papa. Mom and Papa. I can call Mom and Papa. I can call Mom and Papa. But Mom and Papa one day got mad with her. And Mom and Papa didn't say nothing. But she was so f everything. No matter what happened, Mom and Papa take care of it. At some point in your life, you should not even be looking to Mom and Papa. When you start trusting God. When you look to him and say, God, fix this for me. Come in a way that I've never seen you come before. Do something miraculous, spiritual that I've never had before. And if you're looking for it, he'll do it. He'll do it. But you know what? what here's what we do. We, we ask the Lord, I mean, do something different. Do something different. Yes, amen. <laughs> something different, God. Please do something different. That's why we look around and say, ain't done nothing different yet. That started last Sunday. I just don't, I don't know. I told him I want something different. Maybe he don't want me to have nothing different. God wants you to have all that you want, all that you can desire of him. He wants you to have it. He wants you to have it. You got to believe that. If, if God didn't tell us ahead of time that I'm going to look out for you, you would think that would be enough because he's always put everything in the word. It comes in sequence. And so we know when it gets here, he's going to be there too. He's going to work this out. I was sitting there this week, I guess yesterday, and I was wondering what my next move is. I got one move, and I'm wondering what the next is. And I, I begin to think about it. Because if I get along with God and start thinking about it and meditating on it, somewhere in the midst of that meditation, God is going to speak. Somewhere in that place. I was so good, so good to hear Tasha's testimony. That, that's awesome. That's not the, that's not the Tasha we are accustomed to. 
uh, Natasha, we're accustomed to it, say, <laughs> she dare not get loud. Everything is a whisper. I hate people that talk real low. You got to say, uh, yeah. What would you say? My daughter does that. Nisi. Everything she says, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, what would you say? I said, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, what did you say? <laughs> Can you raise, raise your voice for a minute? I'm in her house. Her telephone rings. Nobody hears it but her. All I hear is somebody say, hello. I said, that phone didn't ring. She got them all turned down as low as you can turn. <laughs> nobody, can, nobody hears it but her. And sometimes she just, it benerves me because I'm in one room. And, I, and, and Nisa, what about such and such? I, I think so. I said, I said, what did you say? I said, I, just, I said, come in the room where I'm at. I'm tired of saying, what did you say? What did you say? Lift your voice. And speak so I can hear. You know, sometimes I think, well, what's wrong with Christians? We just walk around whispering all the time, telling, telling the devil he's a liar. I know, I know the Lord can do it. You know, when you're dealing with the devil, you got to get loud. You better tell him he's a liar and really mean it. Get off of me. Because sometimes I'm in my house. If you came and you say, who's, who's, who's here, Sister Rose? Me? Who you talking to? The devil. He's a liar. He's always lying about something. Every time you try to step out in faith and believe God for the impossibility, he's always lying about something. And you just got to say, get off of me. And if somebody runs and says, what you talking about? Get off of me. Get out. I'm sick of you. You're full of crap. You always show up talking a bunch of lies because you don't know how to speak the truth. It's always a lie. You got to get loud. You just can't sit around and say, I told you, you're a liar. You're a liar. That ain't going to work. Get mad. Put him in his place. You, God done told me he's going to do this for me. You're showing me a hundred reasons why he can't do it. God is not limited. He doesn't have anything that limits him to where he can't do what he said he'll do. He'll do it. You just got to keep believing it. I don't care how long I have to wait. I always believe he's coming. He's coming. Even though I may sometimes feel like, uh, boy, I'm so tired of this. But he's coming. He never fails, never lets me down. He won't let you down either. I'd like to eat that ice right now. <laughs> but if I eat that ice, then you can't hear me preach. I'd be so worried. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. You say, we owe taxes. Oh, how we going to pay them? Some people owe taxes because they didn't pay them when they should have paid them. That's the difference. When we go into the Lord, to my Lord, I don't have my tax money. You shouldn't have bought that new car. You shouldn't have done what you did and went over there and spent it here and spent it there and then tell the Lord you don't have your tax money. Come on. Now, if, you, if you're in a position and you really don't have it and, 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 and it's a situation that's out of your control, then ask him, say, Lord, I need, I need money to pay my taxes. We don't believe that. We get scared. We get shook up. But I hope, I hope this don't happen. I hope that don't happen. But, but Jesus had a tax issue at one time when he was here on this earth. And he told Peter, Peter, you need to go fishing, boy. Go fishing? Well, what am I going fishing for? I need some money to pay my taxes. Yeah, go fishing. You know what you would have said? Well, I can't see how that's going to change anything. Go fishing. He was a fisherman anyway by trade. He goes down there and said, now I'm going to tell you where you're going to find the money. The first fish that comes up is under command. He got the money, just open his mouth up and get it out. You know, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Oh, come on. The, the fish got the money? Yeah. And he's swimming toward the shore. Now, when he gets there, pick him up, the first one, not the second or third, the first one, pull him out of there, look in his mouth, and you'll find the money to pay our taxes. Now, that is just really strange. 
I call that the miracle and the handiwork of God. And Peter didn't say, Lord, you mean a fish got some money for me? He's under command. Everything moves and obeys God under command except man. The fish heard him. You say, where did he come up with that money? I don't know, but Jesus said it's in his mouth. Now, who knows? I never even went there. Well, where did the fish get the money? I don't care where he got it. The only thing that matters to me is that he get, brings it up and gives it to me. He could have went down the bottom of, uh, uh, in the bottom of the ocean and thought he had some food. I don't know what he did, but I know he had my money. So he went there, and when he opened his mouth, there was the money. Some of y'all wouldn't would move in that direction for them. You know what I'm Well, I think that's the devil telling me to go down some fish, get the tax money. That's the devil. You're not going to get that anyway. You're not going to get that. So I didn't know. I didn't go because I thought, ain't no fish got no money. If God told him to deliver it, he got it. If Jesus said it, he does. So I got to go on down there and, and so I can do do what I need to do. And Peter went on down there not questioning anything and made up his mind. That, well, the Lord said the first fish to come up. Now, open his mouth, get your money out so we can pay the taxes. And it happened just like he said. But that's not the ordinary place you'd find tax money. Are you kidding me? It ain't never happened since that day. Unless it happened with somebody I never heard of. But he'll send you to some strange places. Go ahead. I remember that time when Sister Daisy needed some money. I think that was Daisy needed that money. Yeah. And um, she didn't know how she's going to do something. You remember you was living in that house. That, yeah, oh, yeah, behind it all her bills. Didn't know how she's going to pay them. Went under the bed, and there was some money. He said, where'd this money come from? Was under mattress on the floor. Look under the bed. All these 20 days, he kept pulling them out. And she said, where's this money coming from? Pulled out some more 20s and some more 20s and some more. Until she had enough to take care of everything. You don't know where it's coming. You say, well, who put it under the bed? I don't care. <laughs> Men only want to know, well, if it happened like that, well, how did that happen? I don't know. All I know, he told me to look under the bed. Thank God it was there. And if he tell you to look under the bed, it's there. If he ain't told you, get on up and go on about your business. Because it ain't under there. So, and, and David Cole said, well, suck it on this money. Up under the bed, I don't know where this money come from. I said, I believe you. She said, I just, I can't believe it. Just kept getting more twenties, more twenties, more twenties. What is this? It's the hand of God making himself ready. He ought to tell you how he did it. And what, who cares? If you're going to give me $1,000, I don't care where you got it from. Thank you so much. I love you. I just hope you didn't steal it, but anything else I'm not worried about. <laughs> miracles, miracles happen if we believe God. Trust them for the impossibility. Don't believe what nobody, you know what? You're better off not to tell people what you believe in God for. Because there'll always be somebody that says, well, honey, I, you, I, I wish you well, and I believe that, you know, God can do anything, but, you know, I, I have a neck up with, but tune them out and move on. Because that but automatically tells you it ain't going to happen because it didn't happen to Aunt Susie. Don't believe it. So, no, I'm going. People, uh, uh, Peter went on down, got that tax money, brought it on back, and went and paid taxes. God said, I'll supply all your needs according to to my riches. Everything he owns, I love that song, says I'm rich. Boy, I wish y'all was to sing that at the end of the service. I'm rich. Oh, I like that song. And I, I can't think of all the words to it. I was at home having a ball off that song. I thought they got to get this song. It was awesome. Because everything that he got, I'm an heir. You understand that? I'm an heir. I mean, this is, this is mine. 
I'm, I am, God has made me an heir and joint heirs with Christ. Meaning, what's his is mine. You're running around asking the Lord for a hot dog when you want a steak. Come on here. He can give it to you. So what we got, you know, we got to watch our budget. When people get budgets, God ain't in it. You can't put God on a piece of paper. He don't come under budgets. Now, budgets is for you. But now, if you believe in God for something, he don't put it, don't put him in the budget. It doesn't work. Because that's not where he fits. That's not where he works at. I just know, I just know he'll fix it. He'll work it out. But people say that, but truly, they don't believe that. They don't believe it. If you trust him, if you know without a doubt that God's going to come through, he's going to do everything he says. And you know what? Another thing that's hurting Christians, we don't know enough of the word. We don't know the word. We don't even know all the promises that's in there for us. There's a lot of promises for to cover every area of our life, and we don't even know what's there. Nisa try to quote scripture sometimes, and she, don't, she, she, she ain't got it all together, but she, she give you the gist of what it means. But you need, you need to learn scripture. So when the devil come, you ain't got to say, yeah, you a lie, you a lie, you a lie. Well, come on, show him in the word. Use the word against him. And make up in your mind you're not going to defeat me on my blessing. You know what? Why would anybody get in a prayer line and then the devil say, you didn't get nothing? Well, you didn't get nothing. You weren't supposed to get nothing. But I declare unto you, I got what I needed from God by faith because I believe it. Yes. I believe it. Oh, you can't tell me I didn't. I know it. You know, come on. Who was that was, talk, was testifying about it? I think of Regina this morning. Said, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what he had done. So I started saying, Lord, I done changed from a mouse to a king size rat. She had changed into a big rat. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't face nothing head on. I'm just, I don't make waves. I just back up. All of a sudden, she went home and thought, "Wow, what's going on? I haven't been a mice all week. I didn't even know that the mouse was gone. This big rat ran up on his head. Oh, and boy, she's feeling good." I told Nina this week, she said, Sister Rose, I'm so tired of this job, and these people just do this to me and do that to me. I said, well, why don't you go in and tell them to keep the job and walk out? She said, <laughs> she said, I'd like to tell her how I really feel. I said, go on in and tell her. If you know God going to open another door, tell her. But if you don't believe he's going to open it, you're going to keep on taking the crap off of her. He said, I'm about to, I feel like some people will have a nervous breakdown. You, oh, no, she going to have one. Right. Why am I going to have one? I ain't having a breakdown for nobody. I'm going to let you have one. I said, Nina, go in there, honey. God will give you something else. You ain't got to worry about that. When I got to talk to her, I said, oh, I'm so excited. That's the room. I said, take some time off. Have a little rest. Now. I'm so tired. To take some time off. Lay down. Enjoy yourself. You can have this job. I'm out of here. Went on down there and did what I told her to do. And I got a phone call and I was on another call and, and left a voicemail saying, I did it, I did it, I did it. <laughs> I said, honey, don't let people make your life heavy. Don't let people make you depressed. And if you work in my nerves, look, I see you. The same God that gave me this will give me another one. He is not limited. Yes. Quit taking so much junk off of people. Quit letting them push you around. You're a king's kid. And if I belong to the king, why are you kicking me around? I tell you what, if Charles and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, Kay came, not, not Charles, what is it? The, uh, uh, the little prince over there. Um, William. If, if they came to the state, they're not going to be taken. They're nobody going to kick them around. They're royalty. Well, you ain't. He said, we are royal priesthood. I mean, we are different kind of people here. I don't have to take anything off of you. God is on my side. I'm going to.
to do this because God said I can do it. Don't be, don't be stopped by people and situations. My husband was a real doubter, which I just tuned in my life time when I got ready to do something because he always did say, Rose, ain't going to happen. If I was depending on him for faith, I wouldn't have any. <sighs> There's a lot of things. I said, Charles, God will take care of it. He'll get us through it. Yeah, I know he can, but, you know, this thing rolls. I mean, you got to have some common sense. I said, I do. I do. But when I go to God, I just renounce common sense. He don't need that. He don't work with that. Common sense. Use your common sense for the dumb things you do every day. <laughs> but when you go to God, come on. You don't go to God talking about, you know, uh, you know, well, it's common sense. That, uh, he don't work with common sense. Common sense is full of doubt, unbelief. It's all kind of crap hooked up in common sense. But common sense is to help you not to step off the curb before looking down. Common sense tells you to put the key in the thing and start the car up. Common sense tells you when you get, get to a red light, use the brake. Common sense tell you when the tire blow out, change it. That's common sense. When you go to God, you don't need it. Because anything we got in the natural, it don't, it don't fit up there. I'll do it for you if you believe me. If you believe me. I believe you. I believe you can do it. And if you believe that in your heart, nothing is impossible to the people of God if we dare to believe him for it. Sit around and, and, and feel sad and, and pitiful and, and yet, I don't know. I pick everywhere. Did you go to the throne room? Where? <laughs> That's usually the very last thing. Man will go every place to every situation before he goes to God. I'm just so tired of running around trying to find out how we're going to do this and how this is going to work. And that's going to work. I don't know how it's going to work. Did you talk to God? No. He says, I don't know what I'm going to do. Did you talk to the Lord about it? He'll fix it. You can rest in that. You can know he's the only one that makes a promise and keeps it. Everybody else that makes you a promise may or may not be able to keep it. But God will always keep his. Think for a minute. Since I'm a, since I'm a Christian now, honey, it, being a Christian has all kind of privileges. You know, royalty have privileges. I mean, those people can get things. I heard, heard one time before Princess Diana was killed, and she went somewhere and bought a dress and wrote a check for it, but they wouldn't cash it. Because, you know, she's Princess Diana. You want to keep this. And, and she could have the dress, but we're not cashing her check. And me and you go down there and, and, and ain't got no money. We ain't got no money. We go down there and write a check and trying to beat it to the bank. <laughs> That's what a lot of people do. Yeah. I thought you held a check. She, she, could, she could pay quadruple. I'm praying over my check. <laughs> God, please. I heard a comedian say one time, he said, he said, he said uh, a, a white woman go up to the counter and put her, her credit card up there, and she's not worried about it. Uh, she knows what she's got on it, and it's not, she don't have to have a prayer meeting that it goes through. Black woman go up there and say, Jesus, please. <laughs> Lord, please, please let it go through. Please. Who in the name of Jesus. If you know you ain't got no money on the card, go on home. And sit there and have a prayer meeting over a dead card, go home. Ask the Lord to supply your need. The card ain't got it. You act like it's only on the card. Come on. I, be, I remember I went to, to a grocery store in Oklahoma, and I had some of these checks with uh, a different little uh, scriptures on in the corner. And, I, and I put that, he said, man, he said, you see that stuff right there? That don't mean nothing. He said, almost everybody who got something about Jesus on their check, they always buy <laughs> He said, they got cross in the corner. They got, they got all this stuff. Then he said, I used to think that meant something. 
That don't mean nothing. That's the check that's going to bounce. That's poor representation, though, for the kingdom. Poor representation. See? But, but believe he'll do it. He'll make a way. We have become so accustomed to f- creating our own little places that we go do this. Just like people going out of these, uh, these, uh, these little money p- places where you go and cash your check and you pay, you pay 50% interest. Are you kidding me? And then can't pay it next month. And you got to pay another interest fee. I thought, stay away from the money places. Those places are nothing but legalized robbers. Of course, Congress, I think, recently uh, passed, uh, passed a bill on it or something. I was working on it because it was such a way of ripping people off. And it takes advantage of people who's in difficult times. I remember, and that's probably the black person here don't date for me with the pawn shop. <laughs> you got to go down that pawn this, this month. Go back and pick it up, and when you pay, pick it up and pay for it, you go pawn it again. <laughs> and you pawn it again. <laughs> it's, un- it's uncomprehendable. I remember years ago, Charles would get a savings bond, and every month we pawned that savings bond. <laughs> every month. Why not just keep the money? Go down there and pawn it, go back and pick it up. On payday. Go pawn it, go back and pick it up. Next month, give me the bond, go back and pick, pawn it, get it, pick it. It's a rat race. It can drive you insanely crazy. But you, every time you're just right there, and most of the wrinkles you see in people's head right here, it comes from money problems. <laughs> right there. Before they ever get old, they got a, a, three, a triple fold right here. Ask them where it come from, money. Trying to figure out how it's going to do it. Trying to figure it out. And after a while, it becomes permanent. And don't wait till you get old. It's a permanent fold there. And you're still doing it. I lived all your life trying to figure it out. We don't have to go through that if we believe God. If we trust him for the impossibilities, we don't have to go there. Listen to this. This woman couldn't pay her debt you know the story and she went to the prophet and he said what do you have in your house she said I just have a vessel he said go borrow some more and borrow a lot of them you know what we do you told me to borrow a vessel I just got a couple why don't you get a hundred the Lord ain't gonna get ain't gonna supply a hundred vessels you know, I shouldn't be being greedy or nothing like that. I just took two. That's why we don't get nowhere. He said, go borrow vessels and don't get a few. Borrow plenty of them. And you know why? Because at the end, when she filled up the last vessel, the oil stayed and it didn't continue. But from before then, she was pouring. How are you pouring oil out of a vessel into these many vessels and you keep pouring? That thing is only going to hold so much. So what keeps it running? What keeps it going? It's because he said, go borrow. Now, when you pull all, all, do all these things, go sell that and pay, your, and pay your bills. It's not the way we think. That's why we don't get more from God. We think it's going to happen like this. But if you get up every day expecting something new, something different, and maybe it's not going to be like this this time and whatever, whatever God's going to do, it's going to work out. It always works out. You got to get accustomed to doing it, a trust in him, and that quit looking for it in all the wrong places. He said, we'll be under them to go down to Egypt for help. He said, they ain't going to be able to do nothing for you. I need you to do what I want you to do. See? Naaman needed a healing. First of all, where he messed up at, there was a little maid that worked in their house that said if, the pro- if Naaman would go where the prophet is, he would heal him of his leprosy. You don't pay no attention to little maids. They don't have much value. So the way we treat them. And Naaman went down to the king. Told the king, 
you know, he needed to be healed of his left. And the king got scared. He said, what you coming to me for? I can't heal you. Who sent you to me? She didn't send him to him. She said, go to the prophet, the man of God. The king don't have the goods, but the prophet does. And so he went down to Elijah and said, you know, he came to be cleared of his leprosy. And, and um, Elijah said to the servant, I tell him, go dip in Jordan seven times. He got irritated. Sometimes the way God gives us a blessing, well, we may not think, well, we like it that way. But you know what I think? I thank God that in spite of everything, that he gave me a blessing. He may have brought, brought it through you. He may have brought it through this person. Or over here, thank, thank you for the blessing. Yes. See, so Naaman got mad. Jordan was the most muddiest river there was. But he was an arrogant person. God had to put him in the mud. I hear you left there, but get muddy and dirty. And so he's, he says to some of the men that were with him, he said, uh, I thought surely the prophet would come out and wave his hand over me and cleanse me of my leprosy. You might would have got that if you hadn't been so haughty and so arrogant. I mean, Elijah didn't even get up to even go down and speak to him. He said, his servant, tell him to go dip. It's like, do he know this is Naaman? Go dip seven times, not just once, seven times. Go dip. And the, and the servant said to him, Naaman, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you have done it? How much more so should you do this? He listened to him and because he wasn't going to get healed no other way. God said, go dip. You need to get dirty. You're too proud. He goes down in muddy Jordan and, you know, God figured, well, why seven times? I should be able to go down there once and come up okay. No, do it seven because you're too arrogant. Keep getting muddy. And put him down and kept going down in Jordan, kept going down. And then when he came up the seventh time, he was made whole. He said, I don't want, I want a blessing from God, but Lord, now, can I explain to you that uh, I was, I was kind of, I wanted you to kind of do it like this. If you do that, you're getting nothing. You don't tell God how to bless you. He promised he's going to bless you, but you don't tell him how. I don't want to have to do that. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I'll, I'll accept it any way you give it to me. You don't have to do it a particular way that I'm looking for and expecting. Whatever you want to do, I'll do it. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do just that. And if you do, you'll be glad you did. Naaman became totally whole. His skin was completely cleansed of the leprosy. No more was there. But he had to do it God's way. Some of your blessings have never got to you because you never do it God's way. You choose it your way. This is the way I want to do it. You know, Elvis Presley came out with a song years ago. I did it my way. That's what's wrong with a lot of people today. They're doing it their way. They wonder why it ain't working. Why it ain't working? You know what? Everything that God promises to do for us and to bless us is contingent upon something. And it's going to require something of you. Are you willing to do it? It's going to ask something of you. He's not just going to hand it to you, man, like everything just handed to him. No, I'm going to give you something, but I need you to do this. He don't want to do it like that. And that's why you sit there for days, weeks, months, and not ever getting blessed because God told you to go do it, but I want you to do this first. You don't want to do that. If you don't do it his way, you're never going to get it. You'll be sitting there a long time. That, that's when we begin to seek out other people and other situations where we can get our needs met because we're not going to want to do it God's way. I don't want to do that. Not, uh -uh, I think that's asking a bit much. God never asks too much of man, man for all that he's given us. He could never ask too much. Listen, Elijah was, God told Elijah, I want you to go down by the brook, brook Cherith, and I want you to stay there. And I have commanded a widow woman to feed you. Go down there. When he went, you said, why are you sending me to a widow woman? She ain't got no money. Go down there. I'll feed you. One time he, he, he fed Elijah, uh, had, had, had uh, 
had ravens coming, bringing him his food. Well, Elijah said, I prepared a widow woman to feed you. A widow woman? Honey, God ain't told you to go to no poor woman and try to look good for nothing. That woman ain't got no money to help you. The person that you think you have is the least person to have it is the person that's got it. That's the truth. But it don't look like it. Don't ever judge a book because it looks a certain way. You, I, this man told me one time in Oklahoma, he said um, he had an exclusive shoe store. And I went in there. He said, you know what? I never, I learned something today. Never try to judge people by the way they look. He said, this man came in the store and said he wanted five pairs of shoes. This is a very expensive store. He had a pair of rusty blue jeans. Uh, kind of faded out shirt. And he said he thought to himself, you can tell. <laughs> Don't judge it like that. And said, he said, rolled in that man. And I gave him the toe. He said, he pulled it up. He said, you ain't seen. That man had a roll that, that would blow your mind. in some raggedy jeans and a faded T-shirt. Don't think somebody ain't got it because they look like they ain't got it. Because let me tell you, God's got something that may not look like the way you think, but he's got it. Same with Mr. Walmart when he first started building Walmart stores and came, came, uh, came to the airport and some people was there to meet him. And Mr. Walmart got off the plane with some former John blue jeans and, and uh, he just looked like a regular old whatever. And man said, sir, could you get back? Please, could you get back? We're waiting for Mr. 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 Walmart. Could you please get back? He said, oh, okay. <laughs> and he's looking at everybody, looking for him. Where, where's he at? He said, sir, please, don't get in the way. Don't get in the way. He just stood there. Still driving an old pickup truck. You know what's crazy about people? God bless them with some money, and they go buy something they, they should have never bought. I've been wanting me a Cadillac film. You, you got to, that Cadillac that you're talking about buying, got to have some tires. You can't even afford one tire. <laughs> you can't afford the maintenance. It's not like just a, a regular Chevy. Everything on that book is costing money. So I just want that. Some people are just, just roll, we, we want to buy a house. Uh, the payment ain't but uh, like uh, $400 a month. I said, and what about insurance? And what about when the toilet breaks down and you need a plumber? You can't call the landlord. Plumbers are not cheap. So have you, got, have you counted on them? Oh, no, we never thought about that. All these things that can go wrong in a house once you buy it. And all they think about it, I got a $400 payment. You got more than that. But they looked at this man, counted him out, and he just stood back and waited. I said, where's Mr. Walmart? He said, I, I'm here. You're him, yeah. Don't go back the way it looks. You don't know what God's going to do for you. That's why he pays three people right. Person, you kind of kick to the side of the road. Everybody carrying a, a hobo uh, uh, bag on their shoulder ain't a hobo. Think for a minute. Because they may not have on no designer clothes. They may look like they don't own nothing, but got enough to pay you out of debt. Think about it. You don't know where God's coming. Many places. Listen. Uh, Peter went fishing again. Couldn't catch no fish. God said, you, you, you're dipping on the wrong side. Put on the, catch your net on that side. And she said, he ain't no fishing. I, I don't, it, ain't got, it ain't got nothing to do with what side you cast it on. Yes, it is when Jesus said it is. It is. He told me to cast it on the other side. There ain't no more fish over there than over here. And the ones that's over there find their way over here. You don't have to, you don't have to go uh, cast a net over there. If you got it over here, you're going to catch the fish. Don't make any difference. Cast it on the other side. Then got all these fish until the net literally break. They got so many. Nevertheless, at your word, we'll do it. That's what you need to say, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do.
was sitting around talking about, I don't think it's going to work, but I'll go ahead and do it. You got you to take a look and say, where's the blessing at? Where's it coming from? Many places. And I found that out over the years. Some of the strangest places from people you never dreamed it would come. Never dreamed. And all of a sudden, here it comes and you say, wow. Understand that God said, I want you to learn to trust me and don't try to understand every detail that I, do, I tell you to do. Just do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. It works. And everything you need, he's going to give it to you. That is if you do what you're supposed to do. And what's your part? Live right. Serve him. Walk according to the word. When you ask him, he's going to do it. That's why some of y'all get sick. Oh, I don't know. It seems like it ain't coming. My head been shaking for days. I asked the Lord to please heal this. And weeks later, it's still shaking. Yeah. I don't know where he's at. Well, you're going to have to wait until he comes. Because just because you go to the doctor, don't mean they're going to fix it. They can't fix it. You know what they tell you? We don't know what's wrong with you. We've done a test on you. Did all this stuff. We can't find anything. The only person who knows what's wrong is God. Because he made it. He made the body. He knows what's wrong with it. Uh, we don't go to, the, to him as the mechanic. We treat, try everybody else. And then we say, you know, I, had done, I tried everything. And then I just got down and anointed myself with some oil. You know what? It just went off. <laughs> you could have had that going from the beginning. Done tried everything else. And when everything else has failed, I'm going to see what the Lord can do with this and see if he can do something with it. I tried, I've done it with everybody else, but it's not working. He will come in a way that you expect not, that you don't know is coming. I remember. I think it was Christmas this year. And people just walking around saying nothing. People giving me gifts, P ain't said a word. Giving me cars, P ain't said nothing. All of a sudden, come this and mom, Daisy comes over with her head, I want to see your face. I said, My face for what? Oh, P done. P done was stone crazy. This is something he wanted to do so bad for so long. And he comes in there and says, you know, I don't know how he's seeing. <laughs> he said, hey, mama. So I got, the, I got this bag and, and down there's all this paper on top of it. And, and there was a little plastic container in there. I said, what is this? I'm not even going to tell you. <laughs> look, look, everybody sitting like this. I'm not telling you. <laughs> no. I said, P. He said, I've been wanting to do that forever. I can't tell you how long I've been wanting to do that. I said, Lord, keep it working. <laughs> keep it working. And was happy, excited to the max. I said, are you kidding me? I kept saying, are you kidding Something I wanted to do for you, but I wanted to do it a long time. Well, never thought that was coming. Didn't know it was coming. Didn't know it was in the making. That's why you ought to move and do what you need to do, because you don't know what's in the making. You don't know what blessing is over here. While you over here holding this death, I got to hang on to this because it ain't paid that yet. You don't know what's coming that God is going to send your way. And see if you sow enough, you reap more. It's about sowing and reaping. Just keep doing it. Don't worry about it. Every time I think I gave the last and look up, whoa, who, 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 who,
wasn't a way you got anything. Keep going. Everything we do is like this. Well, I would do it if it wasn't for what I got to do. That's the wrong way to do it. I would do it if it wasn't for this. I really got to wait. I got to hold this. God said, give me that if it's in your hand. He said, Lord, are you serious? You, 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 want, the, you want the last thing? Oh, this is the devil. I'll be, I bind you in the name of Jesus. No. I'm telling you, it works. You don't know where it's coming. And that's why the Bible says, sow your seed. Keep sowing it. Because you don't know how it's coming back. Even when he said, when you see the storms or the clouds and look like ain't nothing going to come, sow your seed. Because how do we know that it won't uh, do good over here and over there? How do we know? Which way God's going to bless us? You can never, the average Christian will not trust God with their last. Mm -mm. They ain't going to trust God when it changed some. Things change a little bit. Mm -mm. But when you trust God with the last, the greater blessing. I know because I've done it. Many, many times. And it always comes back unexpected in a way I never dreamed. God worked it out. This is exactly what I needed. And some. So think about it tonight. Where you been looking? Don't keep looking on no rock. Ain't nothing under there. You say, I go to that mailbox every day looking for, well, maybe God ain't going to send it in the mailbox. You at the mailbox every day. And he doesn't send it, he send it away from over here. Come on. God knows how to bless his people. I, and I'm going to get ready to close, but I, I am convinced that every blessing that I've ever gotten in my life come from the seeds that's been sown over the years. Not just sometimes, continual. And God has blessed and rewarded me for it. I, I, I remember we was in the state of Washington and I was going to this tent revival and uh, the minister was taking up an offering. And so the only thing I had in my purse was my money to pay my TV payment. And it was due any day. And so I thought, oh, I'll put it in the offering. I put it in the offering. And I thought, the Lord will make a way for me to take care of it. Well, it was time for my next statement to come uh, to pay, make the payment. And I opened it up and it says, Zero balance. I said, what? This ain't right. Zero balance. No balance. The payment I thought I had to pay it with didn't even have a balance. He said, yeah, right. No, true. True. God just, he's always proving himself. If you do it, I'll take care of this. I'll just, in other words, I'll sell the debt. He settled it. He'll sell you. You got to do what's right. You ain't going to get a settled debt sitting there on your pocket with your wallet mashed in real tight. And, you, and, and that's where it stays? No, that don't work. The Lord told me to, to tell Sister Mabel, go down there and uh, buy Sister Mabel an uh, airline ticket back home. Uh, I had just got a charge, my charge card from Eastern Airlines at the time. And said, go down there and get her a ticket and send her home. And I said to my husband, I said, honey, I said, Lord told me to get Sister Mabel a, a ticket back to back home because she came down on the bus and she's an elderly lady. She, that's a long ride. And, and my husband said, honey, you better go have a prayer meeting and be sure that's God. <laughs> of course, my husband wasn't saved. And he said, you go, go Rose, that could be the devil talking to you. We ain't got no money to buy nobody no ticket. And I said, uh, no, I'm going to do it. I said, I got that Eastern Airlines card, so I'm going to go ahead and charge it. He said, Rose, you better be sure that's God. But we ain't got no money to be paying it. I said, I know it's him. What happened? Never got a bill. Never got a bill. Ne not one thing on any statement. But God said, go down there and do it. You ain't going to have to pay it. I'm going to take care of it. But I just want you to do what I told you. I told my husband, I said, see here, look here. I said, just take a look. 
He don't believe in giving no preacher nothing. Here, look, take a look. Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. God tells you to move, move. It's always something over your shoulder that you don't know about. I know. That's where your need is going to be supplied, right here. But because you never did it, you're still waiting on it. And things don't get better a lot of times. They get tighter. But loose it. You can loose it just by obedience. The Lord put in your heart to do something. Don't, don't tell the Lord, now what are you talking about here? I mean, how much is that? And so on, so on, so on. You see the same people sitting on the pews the same way. Never, never get uh, nowhere ahead ever because everything is tied up. You've got to loose it if you're going to have some results. Without that, you can't have it. So think about it this week. I got a need that needs to be met. Okay, why is it not met? Because I didn't do what I should do. But if you do what you need to do, God's coming through. He promised. He doesn't lie. Uh, Eric, come, come. Yes. So take that with you this week. This is not a preacher up here trying to get your money. Don't go the wrong way. Come on up here with me. I like you. Come on around here. Where's that list? So how many folks you got on there? He tells me he got a lot of people he don't like. I understand. I understand. But we got to try to get rid of it so we can free you. You understand that? And so I'm going to ask the Lord to, with me holding this, I'm going to tear it up. Now, when I tear it up, means that I ain't going to have the problem no more. You say, come on, preacher. No, you come on. Yeah, I'm telling you, he'll free you from you. You'll be sitting back there. We'll see you running around here again like something shocked you on the back seat. Yeah, I'm serious. I thought you can't have that because it's taking away your life. You're, that, that, that's why you're the way you are. Like, I'm going to loose that so you're able to talk and to laugh and just be, you know, you do it with some of the guys. But I thought, that boy, do he have a voice? I never hear nothing from him. But you know why? You can't function freely until you forgive and let go. You have to let it go. Because everybody in this room, no doubt, has went through a situation where somebody did them wrong. We got to let it go. Because holding it, holding it inside, as I told you, the man said the other night, um, you're like the person who drinks the poison and waits for your enemy to drop dead. You're going to drop dead. <laughs> See, it's going to hurt them. So I want you to believe it with me that when I tear this up, it's over, okay? And I'm going to hear from you saying, Sister Rose, it really happened. I don't tell people stuff that don't happen. Is that not right? So I just want you to watch me while I tear all this up. I ain't going to even look on here and see who you got on here. There's so many people. He had to write down some people's names and the rest of them he just said people. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's bad. It's so many, he just called them people. We got to free you from that. No more. No more. Believe it. Believe it. This really works. It really works. I'm telling you, it works. You ain't going to have it no more. You're going to have freedom. I guarantee you freedom. You got it? All righty. Okay. God do it. Yes, yes. God bless you. Go back to your seat. I want to hear from you this week. You free. Y'all are vacuum that up tonight. <laughs> Stand to your feet. God bless you. Yes. Lift your hands to Jesus. Father, we thank you. See, work a miracle in your people. Cause them to look to you, God, to learn to trust you with the impossibilities. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Yes, yes, yes. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. My father, yes. the cattle, thousand hills, 